We're on Sims Creek, a tributary to the Elaho River, which is also tributary to the Squamish River up in the uh, um, beautiful forests of uh, British Columbia. This is um, on the doorstep of the proposed Randy Stoltman Wilderness Area. And uh, what we're looking at here is an example of uh, logging and road building activity that's taking place in 1995. Um, it is uh, something a little out of the ordinary in that it, it, it doesn't conform to uh, uh, what we had perceived the Forest Practices Code to uh, uh, disallow, basically. The, the code has set new parameters and guidelines for logging in and around streams that, that we know are fish streams uh, and uh, for protecting riparian reserve zones. And here clearly we have a situation where uh, a road has been built right in the middle of the river. Uh, in fact, probably half of this river channel has been filled in by road building material. And on uh, my left upslope, we have uh, a clear cut that uh, goes right down to the river, um, completely excluding any kind of reserve zone. Uh, we know this stream has fish and uh, it is a very uh, significant stream. At this point, it appears to be its stream channel well in excess of uh, 50 meters wide. And uh, under those guidelines uh, and under the Forest Practices Code, it would be afforded a 50 meter reserve zone and a 20 meter management zone for a total protected area of 70 meters. Um, and we don't see anything here. Uh, up, up ahead, up the road, um, the river, or the, the road encroaches on the stream for a second time uh, and is built right in the middle of a stream channel. And further up and around the corner, the road continues uh, immediately adjacent to the stream. The riparian reserve zone is on the order of 10 or 15 meters wide. Uh, and there is absolutely no justification for this, uh, given that uh, we know that there is a road of this uh, similar, similar construction higher up on the slope that was going up over this ridge and uh, probably uh, would have easily made it up over the ridge and afforded this entire downslope area a protected zone for this river. Uh, but that's not the case. They've built the road right along the river and they're continuing to do so. They haven't stopped. Uh, in addition, uh, right along the bottom of the slope here, or along the road, we're, we're right along the river's edge and this is where the biggest and juiciest trees are. So it, it also uh, gives the company benefit to put a road in this location rather than go up higher where the scrawnier timber is. The ardor was located, uh, well you can see uh, immediately in front of me here on the rock slope where all the slough material in the wood is, that is basically where the ardor was, right smack in the middle of the road uh, with its ass end hanging out over the, uh, the riprap boulders here. Um, and that's basically right where the old stream bed was. They were sitting right in the middle of the river at that point. Where I'm standing right now, we're on a block that's actively being logged. Trees have been filled and bucked. And we're looking at a stream here that is flowing down a 15 degree slope down towards the uh, Sims Creek. And uh, what we've encountered here is a backhoe trail that has been built right in the middle of the stream. Uh, the current forest practices specified in the Forest Practice Code uh, maintain that no equipment should be operated within five minutes of uh, five meters of any stream bank for stream bank protection. And as you can see here, we've got a trail that actually runs right through the stream bed. Uh, the, tree, the stream has been logged right up to the edge. All merchantable timber has been removed. On this particular side of the stream, all the riparian vegetation has been crushed by heavy machinery running up. Uh, the, the stream bed has been corduroyed with logs put across for the machinery to walk on. Uh, this has resulted in a lot of broken branches and woody debris being carried downstream and deposited at the culvert at the base of the road. We're standing in the uh, riparian zone of uh, this stream on this cut block. This is again, we're still on Sims Creek uh, watershed. And behind me is a stream that is roughly uh, 25 to 30 meters across. A very unstable system. As, 
it's, it's pretty well evident from the amount of debris that gets moved through here, uh, the loose boulders and the volume of boulders and the fact that the stream channel is not uh, incised, rather it's, uh, it's aggraded, which means boulders have been piled up on top of it. Uh, we're seeing water flow on the surface, but a significant amount of the water that's flowing down and is probably subsurface through the rocks. Uh, this indicates some instability in the stream channel, and one would expect that if you're logging close to a stream channel like this, that you want to protect the stream banks. Well, where we're standing right now is the riparian zone of that stream bank. And every large tree, every merchantable stand timber, piece of timber in this riparian zone has been felled. Um, in a moment, we'll go down and take a look at the water running around the base of the roots of some of the trees that provide stability to the stream bank. But another important thing to point out is we're standing on a slope that's roughly 15 to 18 percent gradient, which is really not that steep. And it is the main corridor for animals that migrate up and down this mountainside up into the upper perched valleys. This is a, there's a nice valley up at the top here, and we're in the migration zone. Uh, there is no more standing timber here. Uh, any animal that wants to come through here is going to have to migrate outside of this zone at this point until these trees are hauled out and then it won't have any protection at all coming down the stream unless it wants to go down the other side and God knows how long that's going to be standing for. We're standing uh, in this creek again and as I indicated before, and if, I don't know if you want to pan over here and take a look at these boulders in the creek, you can see by the amount of rock in the creek and the way it's placed above the stream channel that this stream is very, very highly capable of transporting a lot of this material. And what we see here is that logging activity has filled trees directly into the stream channel. And what's more significant is right along and inside the active stream channel portion here, we have one, two, three, four, five trees that have been felled right in the creek. What's really critical about this is that probably the only thing that keeps this stream bank stable at this point are the roots of these living trees. Now that the trees are dead, the roots will die and the effect that they have in consolidating the stream bank material and maintaining stability will be gone and this stream bank will eventually erode away and we'll have a stream similar to the ones that we were looking at earlier where the entire bottom portion of the stream is blown out and that's basically the process you kill the tree you kill the living root network you kill the stream bank stability and that's what's taking place here this is an example of a very inadequately placed culvert. Uh, we have a small tributary creek that enters Shovelnose Creek and by the position of this culvert which is about a meter above the water surface uh, it restricts access for uh, adult or juvenile fish to enter into this area. Uh, this little creek is probably about four or five hundred meters long and this type of habitat is very critical for uh, overwinter survival for species such as coho. Uh, currently, most of the water that is coming down through here seeps underneath the road through, through the large boulder substrate that they've put in there. Uh, an easy way to solve this problem was originally when they put this in would have been to uh, just place this culvert about four feet lower. This small little tributary, uh, it, it would have been very, very important to species such as uh, coho and steelhead and cutthroat trout. I, there is a very, very small population of trout that live in here that have been isolated. I, potentially steelhead, which normally would go out into the ocean and, and spend part of their life rearing out there, have now been restricted to this small channel and they can no longer get in or out. I, other than that small population, I, it, it is completely inaccessible to uh, other salmon.